if you have given me the good headphones today no I, we both have good what what is look going on look with the look world? at mine and yours oh are both God. like super good they're tight and they fit my head and they don't have weird yeah. bits of black fake leather flaking off on my face yeah someone got rid of the other ones they're squeezing my cheeks to be more fat and chipmunky than usual but that's okay because only you have to look at me being chipmunky <laughs> That makes me feel good <laughs> to see the chipmunk sitting across from me. <laughs> I, how many people get that to have a chipmunk to talk to on a Friday morning? Well, chipmunks are pretty common. <clears throat> not not talking chipmunks like yourself. I don't have that chipmunk voice, though. I'm sure if you pushed a few buttons <clears throat> over there, I could get it, though. Or if I huffed yeah. a helium balloon. Yeah, you can put it on YouTube. Do people still do that? What? <clears throat> that was like a thing when I was a kid, you know, sucking the helium out of balloons and having a squeaky voice. And I remember I never did it because my mom said it would kill us. Does it actually, did it ever actually kill anyone? Do, do Paul? I, do Paul? I, look, <laughs> I know. Do I look like How many I know people have died from that? helium I, inhalation? Yeah. We died. They just probably have brain damage. I mean, probably it's not good for you, right? It's a gas of some sort that you're I, I wouldn't into your expect body. it's good. It's not what we're supposed to be breathing in. Normally, they now oxygen have, is um, well, it's good for the body. Have you seen that helium-infused beer? So you can drink the beer and talk like a chipmunk. Sure. So you can be drunk and ridiculous. Yeah. I guess that's sort of an oxymoron. I mean, that's yeah. sort of a uh, redundant um, thing. Yeah, thing. Let's just go ahead and introduce the show right off the bat like we're, like we're professionals. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, I just like it when you do it. I don't know why. I just like fine, it when you do it. So do fine. It. Fine. 11th hour radio, folks. You found us. You found us. Um, Christina Stikos and Emily Howe come to you live every Friday at 11 a.m. Broadcasting from Royalton Community Radio live. But if you're not listening live, you can catch our podcasts. Um, you can find them right off our website, 11thHourRadio.com. Or Christina busts her butt to put us on other places too like youtube and apple podcasts and god knows where else i've lost track now. uh sometimes google plus but Is i have libsyn? i have less confidence libsyn libsyn does automatic you know distribution I don't, I don't know what that i don't remember what any of these things are but anyway yeah if you okay. want to find us you can find us you, you can just, you just go have to look Anyway, yeah, that's that's Did how I it is. Did I say this was Royals and Community Radio? This Did station? you say the name of the show by chance? I think I said Eleventh Hour Radio. Okay, good. I'm that's sure. that's helpful. That's helpful. We're ninety six point five, but only if you're like local, local, like super local. 
like you could bump into I'm just us. Pick the lint off my. Thing. Could bump into us you down in South weird, Royalton. Though, I just still don't understand how you can get this station at your house, way out in Washington, but I can't get it at my house. Just because I'm, I think I'm higher than you. I don't know. Yes, I, I'm like 1,900 feet. What are you? I don't know. You're probably like 14. I'm going to guess. John has said a million times. Because you, you, see... you can drive up I... past your house to get higher. That height is probably the well, highest. You can't drive up higher. But yes, you can. you can. Up Stratford Road. Oh. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Can... Yeah, but we go catty corner up toward like, let's see what's higher than us. Tuttle Rock and Strawberry Hill are higher than us. But uh, anyway. Well, it's also just, I don't know. Good radio, luck. Radio waves I've, are I've mysterious Super things. good luck is if you look at my life's trajectory, you'll notice yeah. that I have incredibly good luck. And I don't, which must be why I can't well, get the radio station. I'm sorry. You can never listen to the radio. I don't. I don't really you listen to the radio. You can stream anyway. it, stupid. I do stream it sometimes. Okay, so sometimes get off I your high horse. Show while I'm working. Get down off the, the horses. Computer. I haven't even been on horses for don't months. Don't complain. It's and too don't... icy and nasty out for horses. All right, look. I know that you need an update on the use of what's up as, uh, what do you call it? What do you call that when you greet somebody? A greeting. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, that was simple enough. So here's the update. Is that, remember we've talked about what are the proper responses to what's yeah. up? I just got to say, these headphones are really good. I can I can hear like every little smack of saliva in both of our mouths oh that's excellent which is that's, i that's never helpful. get to hear that usually well we shouldn't be we should be careful with our mouths so that we don't smack a lot of saliva because that can annoy people emily i'm gonna crinkle <laughs> paper if you do that okay so look Kay. uh you can say what's up you can say not much you can say not much. So you but can you can take it literally. Yes, but but here's the caveat: is no, you wait, have if to you say take it literally, you would say the sky, like all those not obnoxious people that always say the sky. The yeah, but stars. you could only say that like once. You couldn't say that twice to the oh, same I know, person. I know people who say that all the time to try to get you to stop super, saying it. It's super annoying. It's no, just I just it, I feel like the people who say that are just really antagonistic. No, they think they're funny. They're the people who laugh at their own jokes. I don't think they think they're funny. Yes, they do. I feel like it's mean. Like, clearly, I know the sky is up. That's not what I'm asking, and you know it. Oh, it's like a, a uh, like a downer. Somebody wants to bring happy people down yeah, to their yeah, level. Yep. I understand that. So just let me continue. If you're going to say not much as a response to what's up, you have to say it in the most disaffected voice that you can possibly come up with. So that is, you're supposed to convey that you can barely tolerate the question. But once you answer, then you can be engaged in the conversation in a normal way. But it's a cool thing. It's you've got to be cool in how you answer it. You can't just... You can't be literal. You can't be nice. Hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't. I. I've, <laughs> I've, it's, com- it's complicated. Sorry, coolness is not like my forte. So yeah, I saw that puzzled look come across your face. <laughs> like I've somehow never thought what of this is before. This coolness of which she speaks. Do people really think about this? Well, some of us don't even have to think about it because we're so cool naturally that we don't have to no, think. No, we're I'm just... so uncool that if somebody says, for instance, like "Happy birthday" to me, I say "You too." Like back yeah. at them. Yeah. Like I, because it's awkward when people talk to me yeah. and I yeah. need a quick response, and it's usually the wrong one. So right, you're you're a little vague. Nuances with this "what's up" thing yeah. are going right over well, my head. I, 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 Woo! I obviously Woo! I'm not cool enough to have sort of this. This was an extension of coolness. Well, you've thought it out. I mean, no, that's... this is the younger generation's coolness that uh. I have had to adopt because I'm close enough to that generation. It's not like the farthest back generation. It's not the youngest. It's somewhere in the middle. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, if you if you're old and you want to relate to the middle people, you have to kind of extend what you, your understanding about what's cool, what's not cool, like what's hip, what's not hip, and then you can make a de- personal decision if you want to try to you know, join the ranks or not, or just be like a rugged individualist and be whoever you want to be. What was with that big, like, pocket of time in which it was like opposite day? Like, people would be like, instead of saying that's cool, which I think that's cool has been around for a while. Like, that's been that's around cool. for a long time. What right? about neat? Like, that's neat. 
Right, but then people started saying like opposite things to mean it like, oh, kill it, man, or oh, that was sick. Like, oh, oh yeah. Both of those sick. Those things That's are bad. Like, That's bad. Right, but they mean the opposite, right? Sure. Yeah. That is so bad. Yeah, I didn't go for that. I didn't like that so much. I that used fa- like I, a valley I, girl I, voice and said I can't even the other day, and my kids <laughs> laughed at me, and they said, Mom, nobody says that anymore. And I was like, I thought that was like new. What did you say? What did you say? Uh, I can't even. I never but heard I said that. It, it's just too lazy to complete the sentence. I like, I can't even, even deal with this, or uh, I can't even deal with that, or yeah, I don't think that's, that's so cute, I can't even, mm. blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I don't think that's super cool. No, I don't think it ever was. I would have heard about I it. I said it in a funny voice, like I was a snotty little teenage girl, and my yeah. kids were like, nobody says that anymore. Right. But I thought it was like super current. But see, I am not super I'm current, sorry. so my thinking it's super current was... Yeah, that's a kind of bummer. Wrong. Bummer. Wrong. Wrong. Well, yeah. I, uh... I know you've been at the beautiful Vermont State House for part of this week. Yes. Yes, we went to the inauguration. That was cool. Did you go to the ball? No, that's tomorrow. <gasps> what are you going to wear? I don't know, Christina. Oh, I, what do you mean you don't? Do you know what no. you're going to wear? The thing is, I have a lot of clothes, but I don't have a lot of like clothes for going to balls, actually. But people plan this stuff weeks in advance. What's yeah, with you? Not, no, didn't. You can't just throw something on at the last minute. I have, I have like a basic black velvet dress that I think I'm going to have to go with because okay. I just didn't. I just didn't. Get yeah. on the ball here, okay, huh. and figure this out. Yeah, you I don't... did order some sparkly shoes because I was like, "Wow, this is the most boring dress anybody would ever wear to this." And I'm not a boring dress kind of girl. I just happen to not have my clothes. The clothes that I have that I would consider fancy are fun. They're fun. Yeah, fancy. you don't want to stick out. And I can't wear those to like a political event. Exactly. Like, I can't be fun you if I'm going to go to a political. You want to be a little sadly. more somber. Yeah. I mean, I almost would. I considered it, and I said, "Why should I? Mm. Why should I not be who I am?" But then I yeah. said, "Well, this is a kind of group of people that uh. maybe doesn't. Mm. I don't know. Uh. I just didn't. I just don't want to make things tricky for John in the beginning, too. Right. So I'll just not. I just will not go with like a fluorescent color or something. I'll right. Just, just wait I'll just till play it safe. Yeah. Yeah. You'll probably make some buddies. And then you can plot together with other, like, you know, you're going to meet other people who are in the same uh, social milieu. <laughs> Is that a word? <laughs> Did you I don't know. I, say, I could never <laughs> say that. I always feel stupid to say that. Milieu. Milieu. Uh, How do you say it? I don't know. Spell it for me. Dang. Here, spell it out so I know what you're even trying to say. What? What? No, this is my spelling quiz. Spell milieu. No! I asked you Don't first. Don't turn that on me. I can't, I can't spell I it. I can't spell it. I That's can't why I'm it. asking you how to spell it. Okay, I can Clearly. spell it. M-I-L. Yeah. E-A. Whoops, I was going to put two L's. No, that doesn't look right. E-A. E-A-U. It's got to have a U in it. It's got to have like an I-E-U or something strange. I don't know. It's I probably know. got all the vowels. Like if you put all the vowels together... Sometimes they do funny stuff. It's they go do an, interesting um, things. You shouldn't let all the vowels get together like that. It's missing an O. And it's missing a sometimes Y. Sometimes Y. <sighs> yes, yes. But anyway, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about the political people yet, so we'll see. We'll see. Okay. John, yeah. it's, he's already bringing home pretty funny stories, though. First week, like, yesterday during the governor's inauguration, um... There was some heckler up in the galley who just was flinging, um, yelling things and flinging like Monopoly money all over all of their heads, like piles of fake hundred dollar bills and stuff. Wow, that's pretty cool. <sighs> that's freedom of speech, man. Yeah, that's where it's happening. It kind of freaked me out though because it was like it was pretty aggressive, and I was like, oh. throwing Monopoly money. No, is but not like that aggressive. standing, being up above people's heads and throwing things at them seems it's a little bit terrifying. Kind of. I, I mean, I get, that it's, I get that it was just Monopoly money, but like, what yeah. if it's not always Monopoly money? The the point is, it is Monopoly money. The point is, that it was Monopoly money <laughs> being flung down at well, all the people. It just means that somebody was mad. Floor. Somebody's mad at lawmakers. Which, yes, you're going to have to yeah, get used I mean, to that. John John said everything the guy was saying was right. Was he was right with... and good, but he said it was a really, really aggressive and violent sort. Of, I mean, not yeah. not violent. Clearly, no one's yeah. being hurt by Monopoly money, but. 
But it is freedom of speech. We have to. It is. We have to. It is. Leave room for that. What he didn't know is that John is the little paper hoarder squirrel man. So John like scooped up a ton of the Monopoly money and put it right in his desk. P H S M. And I was like, John, like when we're walking in public and he sees like a little flyer or a business card maybe that someone's dropped on the ground, I have to like bodily stop him from getting it. Not because he wants to pick up litter. If he wanted to pick up a litter and throw it in the trash, that's one thing. But he doesn't. He saves every piece of paper that he finds. Like a little, like a magpie nesting. Yeah. And- I have that too. Oh I God. have that too. You should see, I haven't showed you all my stores of things that I, I keep little scraps of paper to make. Like I have a whole alternative bookmarks production uh, mm. system where I, I do my, you know, I do my poetry bookmarks, which yes. are very formal. And then I have a basket that's full of like tickets to concerts and this bus and strange stuff. That's just like, I don't know, somehow it captures a moment so perfectly in time. And I do like to memorialize that. The only, wow. the only difference between me and John is that I laminate and I don't think oh, he... Well, he doesn't laminate, but he glues all these pieces of paper in his telephone logs. Okay, so he, he and I should discuss this at some them. point because I feel like lamination will ensure like, Im, uh, you know... Immortality. A, yes, of... like a further reach of these scraps mm. of paper into the future. All right. Hoarders. <laughs> <laughs> hoarders all. Pa- no, pa- paper hoarders. I feel like I'm a paper hoarder. I don't See, feel... John's got me on a barrel, though, because when I complain about his paper hoarding, he complains about my clothes hoarding. So it's kind mm, of like... You're even. We're even. He's right. My things are actually useful, though. Like, I put them on my body. Uh, I don't uh, have anything. Uh, 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 I wear them. Uh, I wear them. No, I'm saying you just implied that his paper was not useful. Well, I feel like the business card of some person that you don't even know that you found in a Walmart parking lot. That is a piece need that is a piece of Americana that is important to to just hold in your hand and contemplate because it implies bigger issues like towards it it it's a gesture towards the me what is the meaning of life. It's horrible when he substitute teaches at school because He'll come home with little doodles and sketches that he's found from kids and glues them all in the Yeah, but I have a box with my kids' doodles. Like, I have a huge box, and I look at it. Oh, I do, too, but I don't... So what's your deal here? Your own kids. Like, you don't just, like, have random, like, stick figures that you find in the hallway. Why are you prejudiced against strange children? (laughs) I know you hate children, I always have been prejudiced against strange children. What are you talking about? (laughs) No, but John doesn't because he's... he's, John's just different. He's cut from a different cloth. He likes (sighs) those imaginative uh, artifacts that come from strange children. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds really creepy, actually. (laughs) He likes imaginary <laughs> artifacts that come from strange anything, really. It's good for very, him. Very like bizarre. more power to him. It's very a way bizarre. of it's a way of taking control of your life is to yes, collect I things guess. and surround yourself with your collections. Anyway, I don't even want to look in his new desk in the Capitol building after a week or two to see what is gonna be in there. Because it's just gonna be like Maybe I'll get to come up and and check weird. out check it out because I would like to check it out. Yeah. They have some very nice carpets there. Yeah. I love going up there. It's all totally restored back to the Victorian era, which I think is neat. I don't think every every state capital does that. Yeah. There's a big chandelier in with there. Naked, with naked people on it. What? As my children point out. The chandelier? Out every time. Yeah. How can a chandelier have naked people on like it? It's I thought being, it's made out all of the, glass. All the, different, all the different bulbs are being held up by like bronze naked ladies. Oh. Yeah. I hear the train. What's well, really early today. Huh. What was that sound? I just heard like a sound that sounded like electric shock. No, it sounded like something coming in. No, I heard electric shock zap. Yeah, that was static electricity. Oh my god. Listen, the train's coming. So... I hear it again. Just... That's kind of scaring me. Are we going to get electrocuted? We have these things on our heads. I don't hear what you're hearing. Just listen I to the train. Just definitely. divert yourself for a second. I'm terrified of electricity. You don't understand. Where'd it go? Uh, that was it? Yeah, it went through town. That's I couldn't what it hear does. it very well It today goes through town. Because my headphones are way tighter. These new headphones? Oh, because you didn't take your you didn't take your microphone and put it over by the window. Like oh, you usually Oh, oh. well I didn't know the train was coming because I couldn't really hear it I as told much. You the train was coming. I know, I thought it was further away though, because it was You just quieter. got well, you got into a panic about electricity and about scraps of paper in John's desk. Just which I can understand. 
You're neurotic. Electricity is scary. I'm terrified of our electric fence. I'm terrified of... Do you remember in high school when they did, like, experiments with electricity? Did you have one of those... Like a light bulb? What are they called? Like, vin... Vindergraph. Vindergraph. Sounds <laughs> German. Maker a vin- my Vindergraph. Generator. My- Vindergraph generator. Is that the right word? Are you kidding me? No. Vindergraph. That's, that's like, I'd have spirographs. No, maybe it's the wrong word. I'm trying to think. Is it like those little lightning balls there's that a you Chi- touch? There's a Chinese meal called Vindaloo. I'm going to look this up. Is that what you mean? Vendor? Pond- Vendergraph? Pondicherry? No, I didn't say Pondicherry. Have you ever Hold been on. to Pondicherry? I, gotta, I don't even know what that is. I got to unplug my phone. It's like a something graph <coughs> generator. Hold on. Why are we vendor. talking about this? Why are we talking about electricity? It creates electricity. Because you heard for ch- little children in science classes, and then then their science teacher seems to think it's funny that they actually get that they so actually you were sh- get you were, electrocuted, you were and I actually traumatized. left the room because whoever's on the end of everyone holding hands gets very Vander Graaff generator. That's what it is. That's what it is. Hold on a second. That's bizarre. See, see. Look, you can buy one for seven hundred and thirty-four dollars. See that girl's hair? Hold on. I'd rather spend that money a different way. No. Yeah. Well, me too. But I probably won't get you that. You know, like in the Goonies, that big lightning ball. I don't know the Goonies, and I don't know that. See that? See that person? Uh huh. It makes wow. electricity. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, I have seen those. Anyway, if one I didn't know I had a name. I just. It, with their hand, and then everyone else in the room holds hands in a long line, and then the last person goes to touch the next person, they'll get a big old electric shock. And okay. everybody thought that was fun. Okay, but so I actually don't find that fun. Well, b- besides being fun, it was supposed to be educational. So what did you learn? That what I didn't, does it teach that you? That I didn't want to participate. No, no. What does it teach you about class electricity? Anymore? That it hurts. Oh God. That it travels through human bodies. What? That we <laughs> we conduct elect- electricity. That is an yeah. important uh, idea. I'm gonna put actually. this down for one second. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I still don't know why we're talking about this. Let's see. I don't so it's something about. Okay. I don't know. I don't know why electricity. Oh, oh I know because you the... felt you heard something. I heard it. I heard and it. Snapping, and you couldn't. You thought... couldn't focus your concentration onto the sound of the train because you were too terrified yes. of getting an electrical shock. Right. And this is how life is. If we if we allow ourselves to succumb to our fears, we miss what's really going on. I'm so glad you brought that up because I think it's worth discussing. But we have to go to a song now. Okay. Uh, This is called Ode to um, Joy. Gypsy Song Man. Oh. Um, Let's see. Isn't gypsy a racial slur now? I don't know. I don't know. I like gypsies. I know, but they're really Romani people. As I sweep round the room. Where is life used to be? Packed up all in boxes Now it's just memories Bittersweet reminders As he shuts and locks the door Without her there's no reason To stay round here no more He drives his painted wagon his one-man caravan The dogs are his co-pilots Ain't got no concrete plans Music is the tonic That heals his broken heart All he needs is his old six-string To make a brand new start Gypsy songman life ain't over yet The best part's just begun Your destiny's ahead of you Shining in the sun The sweetest music waits Like a grail you seek to find Sleeping deep inside your soul It's been with you all the time
His songs are his religion, telling stories of the road. He sings of life and love, and being so alone. Traveling down the highway to the place he ought to be. The journey of a lifetime to find his destiny. Gypsy Songman sings his songs of happiness and hope. The audience sings the harmony so he never sings alone. All those years of wandering have finally led him here to sing his heart out loud for all the world to hear. Gypsy Songman life ain't over yet the best part's just begun your destiny is ahead of you shining in the sun the sweetest music waits like the grail you seek to find sleeping deep inside your soul it's been with you all the time Gypsy Songman, life ain't over yet The best part's just begun Your destiny's ahead of you Shining in the sun Wow, that was very pretty. That was Lori Oz. My friend Lori Oz. Do you know I play music? Oh, you're not on. I know. Hold on a sec. I screwed up. It's okay. Oh, I, there. Pu- I pushed up th- uh, 12 instead of 11. There you go. Sorry. I'm 11? Yeah. 11 was my favorite number growing up. Oh, nice. Because it's just two lines side by side. Yeah. It seemed really... It's my birthday. Oh, yeah. It seemed just like a good number. Um. Yeah, I just want to say people, if they kind of wonder like how I pick the music for this show... It's mostly people that I like. Or no. Or no. <laughs> or won't it's sue like, us I for playing their music without yeah, the rights to For the it. most part, I won't <laughs> play music of people that I, that I think are... <clears throat> well, I did once. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I played uh, some music by somebody. I said, oh, I said something mean. But uh, anyway... <laughs> yeah, I don't remember what you said. Yeah, you I said, won't, I'm going to play won't, this even though this guy's a sh- jerk I won't, I won't repeat what I said because it was just like, you, <laughs> oh, shouldn't, just you shouldn't do that kind of stuff. But um, I don't even remember what or who it was, though. Yeah. So I just, I sat, da- sat down this morning to try to think about what I did all week. And I thought, oh my God, I just can't even like encapsulate what it was. But I tried and I sat down and I thought about it. Do you want to know what I did? Okay. Okay. I printed out 800 index cards with poems. Whoa. I still haven't read yours. John took all the Christmas cards and they're in, they're like somewhere <laughs> oh, and I have good. to go and find them. Well, I, I have a few extras, so I no, always it's in my house, a few extras. But I just haven't seen it yet. That's okay. Yeah. I'm just extending the holiday season. Okay. I can okay. see you're pretty right. excited about that. I'm super excited. 800 is a lot. <clears throat> Why do oh. you print them on index, index cards? Why because not I, can't, I really can't put together a poetry book on a, on a document on a computer screen. I just can't do it because I have to look through 800 different pieces of you know writing and that just seems impossible to me to go back and forth and back and forth and try to organize them. I thought about this for like two years. So I finally figured out how to print out 200 index cards. It's not easy. No. No, I had to buy a cheap printer just for this, like a $25 printer, and then figure out how to print index cards on a printer. Sounds way too complicated. Well, I know that's why I thought about it for two years, and then I finally executed it, not knowing if it was really going to work or not, but it did. And now I have 800 index cards that are it organized. probably would have been cheaper to just print each po- poem out individually on a sheet of paper. No, I didn't <clears> want <throat> 800 sheets of paper. And I then wanted take index a paper cards. cutter and cut them all down no, to size. No, 800? Are you kidding? No. Okay. No, 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 no. And index cards have some heft. Well, you can there weave have cardstock into your printer. Yeah, but think of how like how much waste that would have involved. These are index cards. Although right, index cards okay. are not cheap. I bought some at Rite Aid in Randolph, <laughs> and I spent $20 on index cards. What? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I admit it. It seems frivolous to some, 
But to me... That would have been cheaper if you just trimmed down cardstock to... No. Yes, because you no. could probably get, what, no. four to six out of each page? Look, I went to Staples twice this week. I could have done that, but I intelligently decided to go another route. All right. All right. So you I, you're so. talking to, you know, I am so much like John this way. <laughs> like, I understand <laughs> office supplies really super well. Oh, my well. God. Like, I can, what, like, fall asleep in listen, Staples. I'm, listen, like, going to curl up in a little corner what? on that industrial carpet and just sleep while he, like salivates over pens no but listen john and i grew up we grew up in a time when office supply stores were really like happening places and they slowly have degraded but the original ones like i used to go to this store called miller's and it had like wooden ladders and you could climb up you know it it was like it was it had a wooden floor and wooden ladders and they had all these boxes of stuff and it was just like the coolest place in the planet and when i was a kid i would go there i'd love to go there so huh okay enough about Index cards. I like the printing aspect. I like like the copy and print center. <clears throat> like I like that part. Yeah, okay. But the rest of it just smells bad and is Yeah, but that's staples. <clears throat> that's the, you're you're smelling corporate America. I know. I know. It's like it's like why I won't go to Shaw's. I don't want to smell that smell. I don't want to be subjected to that lighting. You know what smell makes me sick. The bread aisle in Shaw's. There's some weird additive that somebody puts in bread, like in cheap bread, yeah. you know, like it's a nanotech. It's a bad bad smell in the bread aisle. Nanotechnology. They're poisoning us. I have to go in, a tech. Huff in the coffee aisle to get that smell out. And mm-hmm. I don't even like coffee. You're not listening to me. I am. What did I say? You said it's nanotech. Yeah. They're poisoning <laughs> us with nanotech. See, this is the skill of a, a serial interrupter. <laughs> I can actually hear you while I'm interrupting and talking over you. I'm so <laughs> impressed with you. I, is, just, I am just so nothing. impressed with you. <laughs> You're so weird. I just love it. I'm just a bad God. person. I Look, just... I still am I, listening. Nobody gets that, that I really am. I can well, hear I have talk to te- at the same time. I have time. to test you once in a while because I just you can't can. believe that you heard what I said because <laughs> I couldn't even hear it. <laughs> so you have jerk. magic powers as far as I'm concerned. Look what I printed <sighs> out. Something that Look, you've highlighted. Four, four pages. Oh, my God. That you know beats this my, is? That beats my voided checklist of four things. No, but this is this is like auxiliary documentation. This Jeez, isn't I'm... my show notes. This is a printout. Oh, yeah. You seem to have like some dialogue going on there Yeah, this something. is between me and uh, Prene. Prene and That's Kajal. That's not a name. Well, here, Kajal. I was talking to Kajal. And then they switched me over. Customer service moved me to the new uh, customer service representative called Prene. Okay. So not a name. And so this was at PayPal. And I was just trying to transfer money to a friend in England. Okay. It seems simple enough. Just transfer some money. It's in, in That's your not bank. one of those deals where some guy has told you that he's, he's, wait, his, his bank account has been frozen and he needs you to send money <laughs> right away quickly. No. Okay. This yeah. is like totally legit. Yeah. Look at that! If you if you so uh, this is a, took, this is... if you have this transcript of all of your entire conversation <laughs> yeah. of four pages of conversation with someone in India, you should be able to transcribe our show notes. Look at how well you did. No, no, this is PayPal sent me this. PayPal oh. sent me the transcription of the whole conversation that I had with Prene. And if you read this through, what? you'll see how the conversation devolved. Okay. Until at the end, I was so frustrated because they were, <laughs> they were denying me access to my own money. So I said, I said to the guy, you know, we talked back and forth about all the particulars of the situation. And then finally he said, okay, he said, I apologize. Insurance policy for a car will not work as proof of address. If you do not help us by providing the right file, then the limitation will not be lifted. That prompted me to say, why not make your day better? Help someone. <laughs> do s- then I said, do something good with your life. Do you want to be a robot? And then he said to me, oh, and then I said, it's your choice and your karma. And I, I can't I believe stuck, PayPal printed this out and well, sent it to you. I didn't know they did this. I stuck in karma. I have to admit, because I think he's probably Indian. Oh so I God. thought it might appeal to him. I mean, it appeals to me, but it might appeal to okay. him. Okay. All right. How did he respond? So he said, I can only help you if you could help us by providing the right file. You can't, you can't so, break this guy's <laughs> shtick. I'm sorry. No. And then he says, I would love a good karma, but I do not have options unless you provide us with the right file. And so then I said, collecting people's personal information that is totally frivolous and unnecessary is criminal. This company is a crime organization <laughs> and I will not be extorted to provide documents that one, I do not have, two, that you have no need for. Think deeply about this 
think deeply about. He doesn't get to think, Christina. No, listen. This is where it gets deep. Okay, go. Think deeply about the masters who have come to tell us to stop this now. Okay, so then he, he just says, wrote you off as a like bona fide psycho, right? About well, there. he he did just about now. He said, "If you do not have any more questions for me, I will be ending this chat now." <laughs> and so then I say, "I say, save yourself, get out now." <laughs> and then he says, "There is no alternative to remove the limitation. The files sent in will not be shared." And the customer's information will always be kept in our top priority security. Thank you for contacting PayPal chat support. Have a nice day. And so I said, you are losing your soul. <laughs> so was that's this on I mean. the telephone? It was actually a chat box. Okay. It wasn't. Right. It wasn't. Okay. So that's it, how they can actually yeah, send it, it to you. It I was like, wow, is someone actually recording your conversation <clears throat> like they say that they do for for quality control and actually yeah. sending you a transcript of it. Amazing. Yeah. So, so I, I failed. I had a fail, PayPal fail. And so then I, I contacted my brother and I said, what should I do? And he said, Oh, don't use PayPal or, you know, the, the best thing for international, international money transfer is this other, I think it's called. Why does not uh, your car insurance have your home address on it? It does. They but wouldn't you accept just it. Oh, what do they want? Your driver's license, which I refuse to give them. Why do they want your driver's license? Is that because the only thing brother. they want? Because they're collect. Because it's the NSA. Because it's like it's it's Big Brother. Who's who owns PayPal now? Some big elite. Mm. Yeah, don't use PayPal. Guy. Anyway. Yeah. Wow. So it was it was fun. That's how I spent part of yesterday. And I think the reason that all this is happening is because Pluto and Saturn are conjunct. No. No. Did you see the moon last night, though? I'm no, just, I missed it. Just for, Did you see it? That's my one what? foray into your astronomy right now, astrology. Okay. It was pretty. That's all. Nice. Yeah. I like the moon, too. <clears throat> just because I like astrology doesn't mean that I can't just appreciate things on a sort of, um, <laughs> you know, pure, Basic purely level. <laughs> physical level. In fact, I do so much that I write poetry about it. I don't it. think you can refer to Pluto anymore because didn't we get rid of that? planet didn't we decide that we are not recognizing pluto because it's too far from us the astrologers don't accept that i think oh, oh. they're not r- robots well it's it's tied in with mythology you can't just get rid of pluto pluto's the lord of the underworld or something or other no so you can't just get rid of that that's like just because your telescope um, isn't picking something up or it's lord picking up a black the hole one that sucked what's her name persephone or Hades. whatever down yeah, I think Hades is the Lord of well, the Underworld. Well, there's different, there's different word, there's different names for the Lord of the Underworld in different mythologies. So Greek versus... Pluto is God of Disney movies, pretty much, I think. Okay, this is where the rubber hits the road right here. <laughs> <laughs> I am not, not I going down the Disney road. I do not understand why Pluto in Disney movies is a dog, like a non-functioning I mean, just like, he's a dog. He's a regular dog. He lives sure. in a dog house. He fetches balls. Kay. He like, goes along with Mickey. Right. And then Mickey's buddy is Goofy, who's also a dog, but walks on two legs and wears clothes and talks. <laughs> I never like, thought about it. Like, there's two dogs, two total actual dogs. Wow. Yeah. One is a, one is a dog, as we know it. Yeah. And one is a, is a human dog. Oh, that's really creepy. See, Disney is one of the creepiest, creepiest things. That is true. I just don't. I think I don't people who just like ex- just uh, like on blind faith accepted the Disney. Um, and why would a mouse have a dog for a pet anyway? And why is the mouse and the dog like the same size? And why are all these animals talking? Eh? It's scary. It's scary. I wish I could give you a really good answer for why it is. But okay. I can't come up with it quickly. It's something I'm going to have to spend more time on because that just baffles yeah. my my yeah. intellect. I, it's far, far, far beyond what I can cope with. So, but but I have been reading Yates, William Butler oh, Yates. Yeah, I've been re- I love I, I love Yates. You do? I do. Really? Mm-hmm. What do you love about him? Um, a lot of people use his verses on their tombstones, actually, because he's just so immortal (laughs) i don't know no i love when you talk about poetry tell me more i don't i don't know i haven't read any poetry in ages but but you obviously read him he references the moon an awful lot so you like him because he talks about the moon okay just has a nice way of saying things i feel like i feel like he says things simpler than other poets and i i really appreciate um 
poetry that isn't <clears throat> trying to out poet the next poet. You know, you can tell he's just he was just writing because he just wanted to say something and he wasn't trying to That's so interesting. I don't That's know. So That's so interesting just... because I I it really depends on which poems you're looking That's at because some of them are very straightforward. Yeah. But and I those have are the s- ones that I love actually the most. Okay. Like just and those, sim- yeah. they're, they feel simple to me. Like here's what I have to say and I'm gonna say it in a really simple but eloquent way. Like, yeah. I like that. That's I, I totally agree. My kind of thing. Yeah. But I, I have to tell you that a lot of Yeats is incredibly dense. And uh, but what ha- I just made this decision that I was going to read it aloud, basically to my cats. I was just going to read it aloud, and even I wasn't going to stop and try to think about it. I wasn't going to try to stop and figure it out because that feeling of being perplexed about a bunch of words is just not a good feeling to me. Mm-hmm. So I thought, okay, don't put effort into it. Just like focus on letting those words kind of roll around in your mouth. And that feels good because you know it came from Yates. You know, like this is a guy who really had some kind of a good connection with words and the vitality of words. Mm-hmm. So just let those words kind of come out and 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 enjoy that. And eventually, if you read stuff enough, you'll probably make some sense of it. You at least just have the enjoyment of saying the words. Um, but I agree with you about poetry. It should be easy to grasp. Yeah, and and, or, and and it and, doesn't have to be easy to grasp if it at least conveys <clears throat> a feeling. Like I don't care if I don't really understand what he's saying, as long as it gives me an overall feeling mm-hmm. that maybe he was trying to get me to have. But there's other poetry where it's just it flings you back and forth between like, well, are they are they happy? Are they mad? Are they upset about this? Or yeah. no? Are they trying to be edgy here? Or are they trying to be like what? Yeah. When I don't understand what feeling they want me to feel. Sure. It shouldn't be about me. It should be about whatever they were trying to say. I don't know. But I just need to, I need to have like a, uh, what's the word? I just need to have a cohesive feeling about the poem when I read it. Yeah. The ones that leave me like. Confused. Confused bother me, even though they probably shouldn't. Those are probably, that's probably what they were supposed to do, but maybe not. I don't know. Well, I I guess different strokes for different folks, you know, like different types of poetry appeal to different people. I don't want to have to sit down like and work on a poem like it's a crossword puzzle. No. You know, I I just want to have a few images that are delightful. I actually hate like my high school AP English class where we'd basically have to analyze a poem and all of us would argue about what we thought it meant because... Free, no one could figure it out, and that was an. But I don't that's, know. But I that's fun. Like, but that's fun. I guess it's fun. It's but not, it felt so like if a poem is so insanely difficult to understand that you know seventeen different people in a room have a different opinion about it, like no, but you could have I suppose seventeen. That's, that's yes, supposed to be the way we are. I guess it just the, it just bugs me. I and, don't know. I, you know, you could take the simplest poem, like you could take like a haiku. And you could have 17 people having different opinions about what those three lines are about. Right. You know, really, if you put 17 people in a room, you're going to have disagreements or, or different points of view. Well, so, even super simple poems. Look at like um, Robert Frost's poems. Like, well, I was going to bring him so up. So many people think that um, Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening is like a suicide poem, basically, or a, like, you know. I never thought that. No. Remember that? Is it that one? Or is it The Road Not Traveled? No, no, no. It's this. It's Stopping okay. by Woods. It's like a depression. It's like a depression thing and a, and a oh. cry for help and a... Sure. And a like, do I stop here and kill myself or do I just keep oh. going, basically? Never heard that interpretation. I've heard that many times. And so it kind of freaks me out when people use it in a happier context. I mean, I use it in a happy context. Like, my kids know it by heart because yeah. I used to recite it to them when they were <laughs> falling asleep and I didn't think it was you see, terribly but depressing, but... That's what's so great about it is that they can learn the poem when they're little and then over the course of their lifetime, the meaning of the poem can change. And that's that's a beautiful thing about poetry because it's, it's short enough to sort of grasp and chew and carry forward, you know, mm-hmm. and, and revisit at different times in your life. I mean, the best poetry is like that. My, my favorite poetry books, I can revisit and go, oh my gosh, you know, that means something different to me now. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got to go I? to a song. Oh, yeah. No, what were you going to say? It was a sort of lengthy. Maybe I should wait. <laughs> <laughs> or not. If you can get back. Let's go ahead. So, I, I did I tell you this last week? I grabbed a big old folder file of my old, like, 
poetry probably from like the 90s when I was very young and I took it from my parents' house where it had been in storage because I'm trying to work on my writing and stuff this winter and I said, well, let me go and see what's in this. I don't even remember. I haven't opened it in a long time. And I found a poem that was, I think it was dated 1999 and it was a poem about going out to a bar and I... And I basically was expressing, I was actually expressed, so all, the entire time in, in my wretched marriage, I have for years thought like I didn't really know that my partner was like a bad person, that it that it was like a slow, a slow gaslighting or whatever, you know, the frog in the boiling water that you yeah. don't know, you're kind of naive and you don't know what's happening to you until right. you're too far in. Yeah. So this was like 1999, I was 20 or 21 years old. And I wrote a poem that explicitly shows that I absolutely knew yeah. what was happening So to me. we're smarter than we think we were. And then I've sort of stuffed that down and pretended like, oh, I was just stupid. Like duped. Yeah. But no, I actually wasn't I, duped. I was just yeah. I was just weak or something or or scared. Well, you had I don't know. But I it think was interesting because I have thought all along that I didn't really know. I didn't really know. I didn't really know until well, it was too late. Well, there's a couple a couple things I have to say about one is that um there's the love bombing aspect that happens at the beginning sometimes of a relationship with someone who's, you know, self-centered, narcissistic, whatever, sociopathic. And so that is easy to fall for especially when you're young. Um, and and I think we are, I think we pick up the red flags, but we choose to ignore them because there's other belief systems that are operative. Like there's other belief systems that are stronger, that sort of wrestle down our fears and our intuitions. Yeah. It was just, it was just like an insecure thing. I don't know, but it's interesting because it shocked me. I looked at it and I vaguely remember writing it but it never occurred to me that i knew like all along that's so cool i think that's great it's, it's a weird testimony. though it's weird because yeah. it makes me feel it makes me feel like wow okay now i understand that i was um like not remembering that i knew all along because it makes me feel like accomplice like all the bad things that happened to me eventually now when i think back and say like i knew i knew that they yeah. were gonna happen so to me you now it to makes take... me feel extra guilty because i'm like well, it's okay. not. It's like, not about guilt. It's about responsibility. But it's okay to take responsibility for having I know, having I know, but participated. Like, it was also super easy to just be like, "Wow, like I was young and naive, and all right. these bad things happened to me." Like, yeah, obviously, we being a vic victim yeah. is is sort of an easier card to play than like well, I knew and I was just too weak to like do anything about. Yeah, it. being a victim is a phase. I think that we have to yeah. we have to work through. It's okay to feel like a victim, but you have to get to the other side of that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, it was weird. All right. That's great. Where are you going to okay. play? Another song. <clears throat> this is called We Didn't Teach Our Children. Interesting. Okay. Let's see what it sounds mm. like. How did I ever end up here? This packed room smells like sweat and spilt beer. I suppose we were a famous rock band shout. Chewed our music way, 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 way too loud. No one seems to get into it and uh, no one seems to get out No one seems to get into it and uh, no one seems to get out How can I get this message through? Can anybody tell me what the hell 
is going on yeah we're messing up our own home and no one seems to care for long yeah. we didn't teach our children what we thought was obvious no no we didn't teach our children what we thought was Lit up this small fireplace It's just enough to give us some warmth and light And I've tuned up this old guitar And I'll play you a song you never, ever, ever, ever heard before No We can shed a tear and never be ignorant no more, no, no. See, we can shed a tear and never be ignorant no more, no more, no more. Still don't teach our children what we think is obvious, no, no. We still don't teach our children what we think is obvious, no. Okay, that was Martin. That was My friend Martin. Long song. Overseas. Overseas. Do people still say that say that anymore? I do. Across the pond. Overseas. Yeah, so we have a few more minutes left. I have to go out in the cold. I know, I know. And I forgot those those little pocket hand warmers that I meant to bring and I forgot oh, them. Bummer. I promised my kid I wouldn't forget them and what did I do? I forgot them. I was busy feeding the cats. Evil little cats distracted yeah. me. Evil. Oh, Lordy. Yeah. So. You know what I hate? I what? hate that, like, 
you always feel like you have to hide maxi pads like under oh, groceries. God. Do and we have to in talk about this? <laughs> or like if you're going to a bathroom, you have to like hide it up your sleeve or something. I know. That's just stupid. It is stupid. I'm just saying, everyone, I want everyone in the world to be super, you don't have to be blatant with your maxi pads, but just like, just let's just normalize them, okay? Because yeah. who are we trying to protect? Who in the world is going to be so horrified if they see a package of maxi pads in our grocery cart that we have to like carefully arrange the cereal boxes around it so that nobody can see yeah, that but there's maxi pads in your grocery cart? It's not. It's not so much. It's about shame. It's it's personal shame. Like if you if you see somebody seeing that you have that product, like some middle aged guy looks in your basket and he sees you have that product, and then you see him seeing it, and then you feel ashamed. So it's really the whole: why do we feel ashamed to be like female? It's a you know. Do they think we're doing it on purpose? Like I'm bleeding right now on purpose just to make you uncomfortable. Yeah, that's totally how it's going. That's, <laughs> is that what they think? That must be what they think because otherwise, no, they're just trying to manage their own embarrassment because culturally, there's just embarrassment and shame around this, and it's I just everybody's kind of in a different place with it, and it's just a big mess. But that's why we should eat more desserts. I think I eat plenty of desserts. Well, I've started to. I'm trying to make up for lost time because I didn't oh, eat good. dessert for a long time because I drank alcohol, and now that all that sugar is gone from alcohol, and I eat so healthy. When I go to town, I look for a brownie or something. Mm-hmm. It's huge to me. I it, let the I let the kids get like whipped cream and stuff so that yeah. we could have like really pimped out hot chocolate this week. So what we did was we have these leftover giant marshmallows from some campfire event this this yeah. summer. Like big marshmallows, like bigger would, than my fist. I would never say pimped out. I mean, Sorry. in relation to the hot chocolate. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. I don't know. I mean, it's an interesting. I'll, uh, so it's what, what you do is you take the giant marshmallow and you put it in the hot cocoa. And first you dig a little hole in the giant marshmallow and you put a Hershey kiss inside. I hate of it. to be so ignorant, but I don't know what a giant marshmallow is. Okay. Imagine a mug. A giant marshmallow will literally fill the whole mug. Where do you get that? At a specialty store? No, they just sell them at Shaw's because no. everything is super oh, this sized is, now. This is what's wrong so with it's Shaw's. Disgusting. I couldn't find regular sized marshmallows at one point this summer, so I bought these giant ones, and I usually slice them in four. Pieces. Are they kosher? Uh, probably. All marshmallows seem to be kosher. I don't know why. Like you all the other food out. doesn't you matter, but out. marshmallows have to be kosher. Let me just tell you: you got to check out the YouTube videos about how they make gelatin. I know. You'll never buy gelatin. marshmallows ever again. Well, originally marshmallows came from the plant marsh. And so mallow, they, and mallow, so, that and pink so stuff. they shall return. Anyway, to- you put the <laughs> you put the Hershey kits inside the marshmallow. Yeah, this is like s'mores. And then you only can fill the hot cocoa about halfway because the marshmallow is so and large. And then you put it over and the then, open fire. Then over the top, you squirt the the um what? whipped cream, and you can give a little sprinkle of cinnamon on the top. And then inside the marshmallow, the the Hershey kiss will melt. And it's just like, it's just, I think, I think it's can, a, a dessert and I a just, cup. I think conceptually, that's very artistic and very, I, I don't didn't know. think it up. My children have been doing it. And so I tried it once and it was actually kind of nice, even though I'm not a fan of the giant marshmallows at all. Well, I'm all for art projects, mm-hmm. but if you have to eat that at the end, you know what I'm saying? Really though. Remember the hot cocoa we always got at the diner up here? Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. That was heaped with whipped cream, too. Yeah, but it didn't have, like, a giant marshmallow no. that you got a Shaw's with a Hershey Kiss in it. That, no. somehow, for me, that just pushes it over the top. All right, well. Into, like, so disgusting, <laughs> I want to, like, throw up. <laughs> but that's just me. That's just me. Um, okay, we, I guess we have to get off the air do pretty really? soon. Yeah, we do. I'm trying to stop. I to I really, even though I, I love to ski and we skied a lot this week, yeah. I just, it's cold today. I just do not want to be think out about in this. the wind. I don't, At least I don't you don't have to go to the bank like I do and talk about transfers. Yeah. I, I I'm not looking forward that. to it. I'm not. Because they, they always look the bank, at you though. like you're trying to do something bad. I'm not trying to do something bad. I'm just I trying know. to give some money to somebody. It's I, like, I n- always feel nervous when I go into the bank to do anything. Yeah, if they it's look cashing at you a like, check or anything, I, you feel know, like, I feel like I'm robbing the bank or something. You know something. what happens? Like you're talking to the teller and you're talking about something different than the usual thing. And then the other teller looks over. Like what's going yeah, on there's there? there's a lot of awkwardness. Right? And in then the they then trips. they motion they motion to the one that's over in the little office. So now you got right. three people like interested in what the heck does this woman want? Yeah, it is kind of scary and awkward. She's trying to send money to a friend. 
Okay, so you've been listening to 11th Hour Radio. <laughs> Thank you for listening. We're very happy to be here and amazed with you. that you are listening. Yeah, we got to get off. Okay. What are you going to go out on? A song called Meet Me When the Sun Goes Down, Wagtail. Nice. See you next week, people. Bye, guys. Across the sky, watch the days last embers die.